Phil Davison here for the 1959 Guitar Company and I'm demonstrating our vintage aged Duolian guitar. And as you can see it's a metal body resonator, single cone, biscuit bridge, f holes, steel body. And the steel body, you can hear it sounds a bit more clangy than the brass bodied ones and obviously much more metallic than the wooden bodied 59 Special. Um, and that permeates its whole personality. The steel body kind of seeps through everything. It's a more raucous, almost gritty sound. I don't know whether gritty is quite the right word. It's, it's a clangy sort of sound, but it's a good clangy sound for the right sort of music. Uh, so this is our blues beast, really. The neck is a little bit more slender than the tricone and the um, style O, uh, only by a, a, a couple of millimeters. Um, but it's so it's nonetheless. Uh, uh, all these guitars have wider, widish necks um, and flatter necks, which encourage finger picking. So they are well suited up, well set up for finger picking. Which isn't to say you can't strum them either, but that's what they're most at home is with finger picking and they kind of encourage you to finger pick. Um, let's do the resonance test. So the resonance test, I'm just going to pluck the high E string, or the, the high D string in this case, and mute it straight away, leaving the other strings resonating. Very loud prominent resonance. Let's try the, the bottom string. I was touching that E string. Of course, if you touch the strings, uh, the other, meet the other strings, it's, it just stops dead. But if you leave them resonating, that's where you get that resonator guitar sound from. The way those overtones mingled and mixed together uh, creates that unique special sound. If I put a little bit of slide on there. Don't know whether you can hear that through the microphone. It's very prominent um, to my ears. It's a, the way the overtones mingle. It's quite special. It's, it's, it's what makes them what makes this is the appeal of a resonator guitar. Okay. Um. It really wants to cut loose, and uh, that's using my the, the, the fleshy parts of my fingers. If I put a finger pick on, a metal finger pick with a slide, uh, the effect is. I'm not a great finger pick player, so I'm not really going to do much with this. But you can get the sense of that. It is in your face. It's a big sound. Uh, if I had a full hand of metal finger picks and I was finger picking loud, I couldn't sing over this comfortably. Uh, even with a loud voice, I think I'd want a microphone. It is so loud. And of course, that's what these things are made for. They were made to be loud and you know, it fits that bill. It is loud. The other thing, of course, is that it's with this vintage finish, yeah. I think this finish is going to appreciate uh, having a lot of playing. 
I think what you, if you're buying this guitar, if you're interested in this guitar because of the age finish, you probably want a guitar that looks like Sunhouse used to own it. And what you have here is a head start on that. You play this thing for a year, you put some blood and sweat into it, um, and it will start reflecting you. And all you have with the aging that's shop bought is, is a head start. The other thing, of course, is that if you ding it, if you scratch it, if you bump it, um, it doesn't matter so much. And if you do that to one of the other guitars, it's all nice and new looking, you're gonna get upset. Whereas this one, you're just adding to its value or adding to its street cred. Um, okay, we're back in standard tuning. Um, so, mid-range hump that this thing has gone. It's, it's the steel body um, combined with the single cone that gives it that, that um, a bit more grunt at the bottom end, which in some situations is really, really good, and in some situations is not quite so good. If I want a simple Jimmy Reed boogie... Now, you can hear that that has got a bit more grunt, than the other guitars. With a flat pick. You know, it's more in your face. It's, it's, it's actually more satisfying doing that job. When I'm finger picking, um, that, that humps a little bit in the wrong place. At least, at least in the key of C, it is. Maybe, maybe it's um, um, key of E. It's not so bad, but in the key of C, it's um, because it's around the resonant frequency of the, of the guitar. If I'm going to play flat pick single notes. whether you can hear it through the microphone, but in person, it's almost a vocal quality. It's the way that the, the way the overtones fit together. This guitar, you could make this guitar talk. Get used to this guitar, get used to the way that it functions you know, with a flat pick for single note playing I think it's, you know, it just sounds like it wants to talk to you that's the, the quality I get out of this guitar it's a, it's a bit of a beast in the sense that it knows what it wants to do it wants to rock Now these have still got the factory gauge strings in it. The tricone, as I've just demonstrated, as I, in, the, in the demonstration, has got medium gauge strings on the four lower strings, um, which makes it a bit easier to fret. Um, and that might affect the sound of it a little bit too. But nonetheless, no, even with the fatter strings, it's still got on the bass end, it's the factory strings, they're not quality strings. Um, it, it has a, a stronger bottom end. It wants to rock out. It's, it's, all, it's a bit more vocal. And at the same time, it's kind of clangy um, in a good way. So if, you, if you're harboring the desire to be the next Sun House or Booker White, this mm. is the one. Um, because it, it is that. It is a beast. It does want to rock. It's, 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 it's capable of subtlety but the tricone is more subtle. It's louder than any other guitar we have, and it is a damn loud guitar. If I get the metal finger pick and put it on this, oh, I'll get two metal finger picks just to be more clear. I'm a lousy finger pick player. One finger pick's going to be enough. that I'm over 
overdriving the the, um, the microphone. <laughs> very loud with a middle finger pick. You put a whole handful of middle finger picks on your hand. Um, you know, as I've said, I, I would have trouble singing over the level that it makes. It's almost like you want to advise people before you start playing this thing, you might want to block your ears, move further away from the guitar. It is so loud with the middle finger picks. With the meat of my fingers, it's not as satisfying as the tricone. Um, it's just, it's, it's okay. Uh, if I was able to, if I wasn't able to A, B, compare them, like going from one to the other straight away, um, I would fall in love with either guitar. As a matter of fact, um, with, with any of these guitars, the, the sound is actually not as radically different uh, if you can't compare them right next to each other. But comparing them right next to each other, you get the sense that this has got that slightly different sound to, that, to the, to the tricone. Um, I'd be perfectly happy playing this guitar, and if I didn't have the tricone to compare it with, I would think this was just the bee's knees. But being able to compare them all is, is kind of useful. That's what the purpose of these videos is, obviously, so it gives you a sense of, of what they're like. <laughs> Lovely guitar, really strong sounding, um, a real distinctive resonator sound out of this one. Blues beast. Can you play jazz with it, young? Yeah. You can, but because it's got that stronger bottom end, it's not cutting through as well. So the other guitars, all three of them, playing that sort of stuff, they're a little bit brighter mid-rangey, and that's the kind of, if you want that 30s jazz, almost Django Reinhardt kind of sound, they do it better. Uh, but this one's got a bit more grunt. So more low end, more in your face volume, um, and more sense of a blues beast, the Duolian with its, aged body that you can, that is ready for your abuse. <laughs>